Good morning. Welcome to Christ Community Church. So glad to have you here with us this morning. And also for those of you watching online at some later time, we thank you for joining us. Today we're continuing our series better, and I'm hoping that, that you all are ready to hear what God has to say to you because what he has for you is just so much better than what our culture says. We've been talking about choices and, and learning to choose what's better because it's our choices that determine who we are today, who we'll become, and what we're able to do tomorrow. And so if you missed last week, we, we talked about choosing to live our lives in the presence of God. And this morning, we're going to talk about surrendering our lives, identifying those different areas in our lives where we feel like we, we need to control everything. And we're going to choose better, surrendering completely to the Lord. I believe this is a very important subject because whenever we're, we're trying to control something that's not ours to control, it really reflects our, our spiritual condition. In other words, what we're, what we're trying to do in, the, in this particular area of our lives is that we're trying to be like God. It's, it's saying that I need to be in control because I know what's better. I, I know what's good for me. I, I know what's best. And therefore, I can do this better than God. This morning, I'm going to show you an example of when someone said, God, you know, I've got this. I'm, I'm going to control this. I'm taking over. And of course, as you can imagine, things really don't work out very well because honestly we, we we don't do a very good job when it comes to trying to be like God we just we just we don't we're made in the image of God but that's about where where we have to draw the line right and so as we begin we're going to we're going to look in the book of Genesis at the example of Abraham and Sarah at this time they've, they're known as as Abram and, and Sarai but we're going to look at their lives because if there's anybody who battled with control issues in their life, it was, it was both Abram and Sarah. However, I think that most of us, most of us, if we're, if we're truly honest with ourselves, we'd have to admit that there are some areas of our lives where we feel like we have to control everything. And some of you may be sitting next to that person. You're sitting next to somebody like that. Others of you work for that person, and some of you are that person. You know, it's you. You're, you're, the, you're the massive control freak. In your home, in your workplace, everything has a place. Everything's got to be done your way. Or maybe you want to control everybody. You want to control schedules. You want to control the money. You want to control how everybody acts. But the problem is, and we're going to see this in Genesis chapter 12, that when we try to take control and we're, we're, we're not completely surrendered to God, we rarely get it right. And, and things can get really bad really quick. For example, when God calls Abram, he says, leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land where I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. And so Abram believed the promise. And he left just as the Lord had told him. But there was a famine in the land. So Abram went down to Egypt. And verse 11 tells us, as he was about to enter Egypt, he said to his wife, Sarai, I, I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they'll say, this is his wife. And then they'll, they'll, they'll kill me, but they'll let you live. And so he tells his wife, he says, so, so tell them that you're my sister. Tell them you're my sister so that I'll be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. Notice how Abram, instead of, instead of trusting God with this situation, instead of telling the truth like he was supposed to, he, he lied because he was playing God. He was attempting to control the circumstances while ignoring the promise of God. You see, God had promised Abram that, that he would be the father of many nations, that, that he and Sarah would, would, be, would be parents. But now watch this. Things, things are going to get even worse. Things get worse. 
many years go by and they're still childless. So Sarai does what so many of us do when God's timing just isn't working. She took things in her own hands. She took control and she tried to fulfill the promise of God her own way. Genesis chapter 16 tells us that she said to Abram, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go, sleep with my maidservant. And so Sarai, taking control of the situation, she attempts to take the place of God. And so she says, perhaps I can build a family through her. You see, she'd grown impatient. God wasn't doing what he said he would do. It had been years. And so she took control, telling Abram, go, go sleep with my maidservant. The last part of verse 2 and following says, Abram agreed to what Sarah said. So after Abram had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarah, his wife, took her Egyptian maidservant, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. You see, God, God made them a promise. But his timing wasn't meeting their expectations. So, so they took things into their own hands. They took control. And unfortunately, as is often the case when we try to play God, things didn't work out quite like Sarah had planned. Verse 4 says, Abram slept with Hagar, and she conceived. She got pregnant and gave birth to a son named Ishmael. However, later, Genesis chapter 21 tells us that Sarah got pregnant too. And she gave birth to the promised son Isaac. And so now, because of Abram and Sarah's impatience, now there was, there was two, two boys in, in, the, in the picture, because they determined to take control of things, and because of that, everything went south, things got really bad. As a matter of fact, there's, there's been tension ever since. I mean, if, if, if you've watched the news any time since the invention of television, you're, you're well aware of the conflict. You see, from the, from the descendants of Ishmael came Mohammed and the Palestinians. But out of Isaac, the promised child, you have the Jewish nation, Israel, through whom came the Messiah, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so because of Abraham and Sarah taking control of the situation, not being surrendered to the will of God, we've had centuries of tension between the Palestinians and the Jews. And this is, this, there are so many important spiritual lessons that we can learn in this, but, you know, when it comes to trusting God, I think it's just important that we know, that we consider how to choose better. It's making that choice. To think outside of, of our circumstances, outside of our situation, and think with the mind of Christ to choose better. And so I want you to consider for a moment how, how to choose better in your, in your life. You know, what, what areas are you, are you trying to control? Maybe it's a person, a thing, or a certain circumstance, a, a relationship, or a financial issue. But what is it that you're trying to control? Some of you may still be trying to control your kids, but now they're, now they're grown-up kids. Or maybe, maybe your coworkers or your spouse. What are you tempted to take control of when things aren't right, when, when things are taking too long, when something just doesn't seem to be going your way? Today I want to encourage you that when life hands you choices, Choose better. Because when you, when you try to control something that you're supposed to trust the Lord with, the results can be really, really bad. And we see that very clearly illustrated with Abraham and Sarah. And so this morning we need to learn to surrender, to trust the Lord, to trust his timing, and to give to him whatever it is, that person, that thing, or circumstance instead of trying to control that situation, we need to choose better and surrender. 
You see, there's, there's no greater place to be than in that place of total surrender. Because that's where you're, you're waiting on God. You're, you're believing in God. And you're trusting God. And that's a place of true worship. A place of contentment and perfect peace. And so I'm going to share with you three, three steps to help you reach that goal and accomplish that in your life. Number one is to simply determine what matters most. The first step to surrendering all of your life to God is determining what matters most. You see, we, we need to do that, determine what matters most, because it's better to have more of what matters and less of what doesn't. Because that's where we find that, that place of, of rest for our souls. That's where we find tranquility in the peace of God. And so we need to, f need to define what really does matter. King Solomon spoke about this. The Old, Old Testament tells us that, that Solomon had greater wisdom than all the kings of the earth. And he, he wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, saying, Better one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. You see, he recognized the wisdom of a balanced life, determining what matters most. You know, being a, being a man or a woman who's productive, but also careful to take time to relax and to enjoy life. And so Solomon says it's better to have, have gain in one hand and tranquility in the other. It's better to have a, a balance of work and rest because you can take what you want from life, but you're going to have to pay for it. And so you, you just may discover that it's chasing after the wind. This morning, I want to encourage you to seriously consider what matters most to you. Don't, don't let our culture lie to you. Don't, don't fall for the, the traps of, of our society. You know, that you, we, we were raised and we grew up hearing so many different things, you know, and, but we, we, we can't settle for the good life. We talked about that the other week. Not, not settling for the good life. Not, not to waste your, your life on things that don't matter. Because you have purpose and your calling is great. And so we don't want to settle for second best. When life hands you choices, choose better. Because God created you to make a difference. God called you to something so much better. Here's, here's what the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2. It says, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. To do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. And so you have purpose. You were created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And your calling is too great, and your God is too good to waste your life on things that don't matter. Therefore, don't sell out chasing after the wind, as Solomon says. But consider your life as a mist. A mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. And so what would you do if you knew that you only had a month to live? What, what would you do in, in the next 30 days? Most likely, if you were to make a list, if you were really to seriously sit down and pray and consider this, if you were to, to make a list, micromanaging somebody else's life is not going to be on there. You know, th their schedules or, or their whatever is not going to rank very high on your list. As a matter of fact, many of the things that people pursue in the world today probably won't even show up on your list. They're just not things that really matter. But you may find that your relationship with God is the most important thing. You might find that right there at the very top of your list. And your, your family, your, your marriage, and your children would rank right up there near the top. You see, the reality is that the things that matter most are often meaningful things, things that last, and not the tangible things of this world. And so why waste your time on all this stuff that doesn't matter when it's better to have one handful with tranquility? You see, when we begin to consider those things that matter most, and to put all this other stuff over here on the side. Now some of those things, 
I'm going to say some of those things that we have to put over here on the side, things that don't really matter that most, some of those things are, are responsibilities. We do need to take those seriously. But honestly, there are so many things that we just, we just don't need to be worrying about. It's not something that we need to do, something that we need to think about. Certainly nothing that we need to control. And so we can choose better, having determined what matters most, and number two, throwing off what doesn't matter. We choose better when we, when we let go of anything that doesn't matter. But I want to emphasize again, there's a really big difference between surrendering control and abandoning our responsibilities. You see, there, there are some things that God wants us to do for ourselves. For example, if, if your finances are a mess, you, you don't just sit around waiting for God to mail you a check. It usually doesn't work that way. I mean, it does sometimes, but not usually. And so if, if you've got a family to feed, you, you go to work, you, you, you spend less than you're making. And if you can't rise above your circumstances, then you get a second job. You, you do something about it. You do what you can in those situations, but if, if it's something that doesn't matter, something that's holding you back from doing what God has called you to do, then you do what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12. You throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and you run with perseverance the race marked out for you. And so you, you don't allow yourself to be slowed down. You, you throw off what doesn't matter. You throw off everything that would hinder you from competing in the race before you. But if, you, if you're anything like me, though, this, you can find this to be very difficult. Because deep inside, you, you want to serve, you, you want to give, you, want, you have this desire to please everybody. And so when it comes to life, there's a temptation to say yes to every invitation. To help everywhere you can help. But what I've discovered is all that does is create a perpetual state of busyness that eventually results in exhaustion. Therefore, you're going to have to say no to some good things in order to say yes to what's better. You see, when you say no to what everybody else says yes to, when you're choosing better because you're, you're, you're choosing better because you can say yes to what nobody else has time for. That's God's plan for better. God has a better plan. It's a plan to give you a hope and a future. And I can assure you that busy and tired was not part of his plan. It wasn't part of his plan. It, was, it wasn't even on his mind. In fact, when Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest, he wasn't referring to that. He wasn't referring to our schedules being so busy and us being so tired. He was referring to our souls and the works of the law. Today, you and I need to recognize that God has a better plan. Our, our culture has lied to us. And more is not better. For some of you, it's time to start saying no to some things that everybody else is saying yes to. And honestly, sometimes that means disappointing, disappointing some people. But just because you could do something doesn't mean that you should. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, recognizing there's a race before you. There's a will, a purpose, and a plan. You see, God put you here to do something significant. And yet the devil, our spiritual enemy, is going to try to distract you. He'll tempt you, and often with good things. And so if you're not careful, before long you'll find yourself detoured and chasing after the wind, doing something, or investing all of your time and energy into something that doesn't even matter. So we need to develop the discipline to throw it down, to throw off what doesn't matter, and to choose what's better. And yet, in, in so many different ways, we, we find ourselves caught up in this kind of sub subconsciously, I suppose because of, of our, our culture, the environment that we live in. And subconsciously, there's so many different ways, but, you know, we're still trying to control our environment. We're still trying to control those things around us. 
Many of us do that by creating a form of, of security by the things that we've collected. We, we, we gather all this stuff around us. And so we've got walk-in closets. We, we've got basements. We've got garages that are full to the ceiling. Some of us have so much stuff that we've got to rent additional space to put our stuff in. And so sometimes we, we've just got to have a spring cleaning and we, to throw out what doesn't matter. Just get it out of the closet. You know, I was thinking about it this morning. You know, if, if, if you haven't used it or worn it in the last year, then just give it to somebody who can use it. Give it away because honestly, the Bible tells us all this stuff is going to burn up one day anyway. It's all going to burn up. And so we need to determine what matters. Throwing off what doesn't matter because there are just so many areas of our lives where we're, we're clinging to things, we're pulling and tugging, tr desperately trying to control. And yet many of us, we're, are, we're literally wasting our minds, wasting our time because we've created this environment where we isolate ourselves in technology. And we need to learn to surrender that area to God too. You see, the, the, so there are so many of us that we spend more time on our phones and tablets each day, messaging, texting, even, even playing video games than we do in prayer, in God's Word, serving others, or some of us playing with our own kids. And so today I'd like you to consider, I'd like to ask you honestly to consider why, why it is that you're wasting hours of your life doing something, holding on to something, or just being so busy doing something that really doesn't matter in the light of eternity. For some of us, it's time to surrender that to God, to throw it off, to cast it away, to stop isolating yourself, to stop trying to control your environment. And so we need to consider what matters most, to throw off what doesn't matter, and number three, trusting God with the rest, because it's just better better you see much of our lives are spent desperately trying to control things that we really have no right to control we don't and the stress and the anxiety in our lives for the most part is because of, of, of the things we, that we refuse to surrender and to trust God with for example I wonder how many of you are anxious about something maybe something that somebody else did and yet, as much as you tried, it was actually something that, that you couldn't change. It didn't matter what you did. You, you couldn't change a thing about it. Well, there's, there's a familiar passage written by the Apostle Paul that I, that I often find encouraging because even when he was imprisoned and chained to a Roman guard, he writes these amazing words. And here's, what, here's what he said in Philippians chapter 4. He says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything... By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. You see, we can go boldly before the throne of grace with everything by prayer and petition, petition because we have access to God. He hears our prayers, and with him all things are possible. And so Paul encourages us to surrender it all with thanksgiving. You know, praise God, take, take this. <laughs> Cast it off, throw it, throw it off. Surrender with thanksgiving because we know that he hears us. We know that he cares. And we know that he's working in all things to bring about good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And the Bible tells us that when we do, verse 7 says, the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And so when there's something that you can't control, you just surrender and give it to God, realizing that, that if, it's your, if it's your spouse that's making poor choices, if, if you're struggling with sickness and uh, may, maybe pain and, and you're hurting, or if your kids are out of control and set on a path of destruction, you just choose better. You choose better. You surrender, recognizing that you can't change their behavior. You can't heal yourself. You can't control the future. But you have a God that can, and with him all things are possible. And so it's at that point that God does something supernatural. 
It's at that place of surrender where you come and you give it to God that he gives you a peace that goes beyond your ability to understand and is really summarized best in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. You just choose better. You choose better. But it's got to be purposeful. It's got, it's got to be like, you know, a, having, having a, a fire drill where you, you know exactly what you're going to do. When you get to that situation, you choose better and you trust the Lord with it. You're trusting the Lord. You're surrendering so that your life is completely in his hands. In other words, not leaning on your own understanding, not thinking you've got it all figured out, not thinking you've got something under control, but surrendering. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Surrendering what matters most. Throwing off what doesn't matter and trusting him with the rest. When we do that, when we're trusting him, when we're surrendering, acknowledging him, he will make our path straight. Choose better. Surrender. Because it's so much better to have less of what doesn't matter and more of what does. Can we all go to, get, go to God together in prayer? Let's pray together. Father, I do thank you for your word to us today. I pray that this message would speak to our hearts, that we would be changed, surrendering and living for that which matters most. I ask that your Holy Spirit would draw us to yourself so that you could do what only you can do. Bring those things to mind that we need to surrender to you this morning. Give us the courage to act on our convictions. Lord, give us boldness to approach your throne of grace. As we continue praying, nobody looking around, but everyone looking deep within. There are some of you that have have recognized that there's something or, or someone that you're trying to control. Some area, something where you've been trying to be like God. And you, you've been manipulating things, trying to get the, the outcome that you desire. And today as you're reflecting, it's time to trust this to God. It's time just to, just to be honest, to call it what it is, and to repent before God. Those of you who say, yes, there, there, there is something like that. God's been speaking to me about it this morning. I'm, be, I'm being moved by His Spirit. I, I, I want to choose better. I surrender. If that's you, would you lift your hands high right now? Just lift your hands of faith as, as we seek God together. Just lift your hands up. Let's respond to God this morning. Father, I thank you. So many people are responding this morning. You've been speaking to them today. I know that in my life there are so many things that really don't matter. And so I, I pray for all of us that we would recognize when we're being distracted by something that really doesn't matter. I pray that, that as your spirit speaks to our hearts, that we would have the courage to throw off what doesn't matter. That you would empower us to just let it go. And that as we surrender, that we would have less of what doesn't matter and more of what does. Speak to our hearts and transform our lives by the power of your Spirit. Whatever it is that you're speaking to us about this morning, I, you know, whether, whether it's something that we should be doing or, or something that we should stop doing, give us wisdom. Give us the heart of surrender to trust you completely with, with, with this person, with that situation, Whatever it is, we're recognizing that it's not ours to control. Help us to surrender this morning, giving it completely to you, believing that you're sovereign, that you're wise, that you're powerful and you're loving. We choose to surrender completely to you. And so we ask that your peace, the peace of God which goes beyond our ability to understand, would guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Father, we trust you. 
leaning not on our own understanding, but in all things, in all of our ways, submitting to you. As we continue praying, there are some of you, there are some that are still struggling with the whole concept of surrendering to God. And maybe this morning you've been resisting because you've been in control all of your life. You do what you want when you want. You do what you think will make you happy. And yet in spite of all that, it really hasn't made a difference. And some of you this morning, you, you've continually made choices, missing out on God's best. And he's got something way better. But first you need to understand more than anything else. You need to understand that God wants us to completely surrender everything to his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is Lord. And if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. You see, some of you have been enticed by the world. You're following, pursuing, and striving for things that don't last, things that really don't matter. And that's because our, our natural tendency You know, God calls us sheep. We all go astray. We, we wander. The grass is always greener on the other side. And so we have this natural tendency to wander away from God. We're naturally bent away from God, and our, our sin nature entices us to give our lives to things that, that don't last, things that don't even make a difference, and certainly not for eternity. Yet we discover that all the, all the stuff As much as, as, we, as we seek and clutch and, and grab at it, all the stuff of this world doesn't satisfy us. We're still filled with an emptiness because nothing outside of a relationship with God can fill that emptiness inside of us. And so more than anything else, we need to acknowledge that our sin is separating us from God, that we need his forgiveness, and that we need to surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. You see, if we go all the way back to Abram and Sarah, God told Abraham that, that he would be the father of many nations. And so Isaac is born. And through his descendants, through his family, we have the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Jesus, who was born of a virgin, who lived without sin. Jesus, who's perfect in every way. He lives that perfect life. But he's set up, he's framed. He becomes sin for us on the cross. He dies as a perfect sacrifice. And on the third day, he rises again. He rises from the dead so that anyone who calls on his name will be saved. Now, if you're, if you're, if you're fully following Jesus Christ, you, you can't be in control of your life. Because you're going to go wherever he leads you. If he saved you, if he's died for you, You'll want your life to make a difference for him. And there are those of you today who recognize that you haven't given him control. That you've hijacked your life. You've taken it away from the, the one who gave his life for you. You've stolen your life. And you need his forgiveness. You need his forgiveness. You're here today because it's time for you to surrender to him. You're recognizing you've been trying to do it on your own, but you need his help. And so today, if you say by faith, I, I turn from my sin, I, I turn toward Jesus. I'm no longer in control. I completely surrender my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. If that's, if that's your prayer today, if you'd say, yes, I need Jesus. I need his forgiveness. Today, I choose to surrender to Christ. If that's your prayer, would you lift your hands high right now? All of you say, yes, I surrender. I, I, I lift them up. Just respond to Jesus this morning. Just respond to Jesus. Any others? Any others surrendering? Giving them their all? Would you, would you pray with those around you? 
Everybody praying aloud. Nobody, nobody praying alone. Pray, Heavenly Father, I surrender. I give my whole life to you because Jesus saved me. He died on the cross for me. And so I ask you to forgive me. In Jesus' name, make me a new creation. Fill me with your spirit so I can serve you, so I can live for you. My life is no longer my own. 